All right, can you hear me now? Hopefully that worked. Otherwise, I will have to revert to something else. Oh, good. You folks can hear me now. All right. As I was saying, sorry, uh, it's been a bit of a mess here tonight. Uh, I was running late to begin with for various reasons. And then I realized I was at Lemon, so I had to run to the store. And, of course, tonight's when uh, everything from OBS to... Uh, you know, the Windows itself decided they needed to update and reboot. Uh, earlier today, um, was it uh, uh, the the thing that allows the hashtags in there and such? Um, stream elements. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, decided that not only did it need to update, but it needed to stop working for a while. It wouldn't let me log in, and it, they finally fixed that. But Everything needed to be reset, so if anything seems off or weird or somehow strange, let me know in the chat, and I will try and fix it. Um, <sighs> how's everyone doing? <laughs> Hopefully better than I am tonight. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive into our... Uh, our first drink. Actually, I'm going to say uh, Happy Trans Awareness Week, if that's the appropriate term. Uh, I know a lot of us out here are feeling like we could use people to be a little less aware of us these days. But, um, you know, we'll all make it through this and, uh, you know, things will be better in the future. Um, as fo many folks will know, uh, the uh, um, Trans Day of uh, Remembrance is next Monday, and I've got a drink coming up for that. Actually, each drink is kind of on a, or each item tonight is kind of on a different theme. Uh, this first one is actually a fantastic Thanksgiving drink. Uh, the uh, food that I'm making is perfect for football games, football season, and the last one is for Trans Day of Remembrance. So, uh, big important show, <laughs> and of course, everything's going wrong. So, uh, so, Morning Wind, good to see you. Uh, Winter Vespers, hello, and thank you for resubscribing. I, you, you've been subscribing since it was possible to subscribe, and I always appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Chad Bear, good to see you. Glad, glad you could make it, and hello to all the folks who haven't subscribed, or not, uh, not subscribed, haven't followed yet for whatever reason. I'm, you know, I'm glad you're here. If you want to follow, that would be fantastic. Uh, if not, we're actually, uh, I know we're well over 100 people following. That happened last year, even. Um, I'm hoping to get to 200 before the end of the year. I'm not even sure how close I am at this point. Should probably have looked that up. Um, let's see. So, yes, it's uh, Trans Awareness uh, Week. Uh, and Thanksgiving is coming up next week. Don't have a show uh, until then. Um, so let's just get to it. Uh, cause apparently I, I would like a drink. Um, so the other thing that happened recently that, uh, just before Halloween actually is Lori and I had our, uh, 21st wedding anniversary. And one of the things she got me for that was this book called Drinking Like Ladies. And it's cocktails, uh, from the world's uh, the world's leading female bartenders, and they're all inspired by famous women. Um, now, actually, the original drink I was hoping to do for Trans Day of Remembrance uh, was inspired by Lily Elbe, who, if you're not familiar with her, she was uh, the woman who inspired the, who the film The Danish Girl was about. Uh, one of the first uh, trans women to medically transition. She actually uh, died get, trying to get a uterine transplant. Um, uh, and it was at that the famous, uh, oh, I, I can never pronounce it, but the famous uh, institute in Germany that the Nazis burned down. Um, unfortunately, the ingredients for that were unavailable. <laughs> uh, they're mostly Dutch ingredients uh, like barrel-aged Genever, uh, which I found one bottle of somewhere over on the East Coast and I couldn't get it here in time. Things like that. So I'm, I will source that for next year. Um, 
But as I said, uh, I was going through this book, Fantastic Drinks in Here. Oh, and Winter Vespers of Morning Wind said, uh, happy anniversary. Thank you both for that. Um, Jack is here. Wave, I'll wave back at you. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, Jack, what, what pronouns are you using these days? Uh, I don't want to get those wrong. Um, and hi, Ogre. Good to see you. Uh, nice. Uh, yeah. I did. I lure you in with this first drink, the the Thanksgiving one, because I it sounded like you were interested in it. Um. Anyway, so this this cocktail book is fantastic. And actually, let me switch now to the drink because I'm standing a little too close. Anyway. Um, so uh, each one, as you can see here, has the uh, a little bit of history about the person who inspired the drink. And then uh, the cocktail recipe itself, and you know a few more notes up here as well. Um, and as you can see, I've got a lot of things checked here that I want to try or have tried and have been good. Um, oh, uh, Chad Bear says hello uh, for me and Avalon. Uh, hi, hello Avalon. Good seeing you. Um, all right. So uh, this one, and I'm just going to read from the the book on this because. As I said, I'm a little bit behind, so I didn't summarize it, but uh, this cocktail is uh, inspired by Aspasia of Miletus, who was the first lady of Athens and a philosopher in uh, from approximately 470 to 400 BCE. Um, and let's see, Aspasia of Miletus defied all the rules of 5th century Athens to become the city's most powerful and influential woman. Born in Miletus, ah, I was pronouncing that just a minute ago, uh, Miletus, the west coast of modern-day Turkey, Aspasia arrived in Athens, where she operated a salon around uh, 470 BCE. Whether it was a brothel, an institution for intellectualism, or some blend of the two is unclear, but she hosted the most influential men in, in Athens, including the city's democratic leader, Pericles. She also established a school for girls. Uh, Pericles fell for Aspasia, divorce, divorcing his wife and leaving her with his two sons to live with Aspasia. And I, I'm going to mispronounce everything tonight. Apologies. Uh, Aspasia, in defiance of his own laws to prevent political alliance by marriage. Pericles had passed a law forbidding foreign-born from marrying Athen Athenians. So he and Aphasia lived as companions and lovers, and they had a son who was his namesake. Ancient writers had uh, had much to say about Aphasia, uh, with each of their writings representing their own bias against her, as Aphasia defied the status quo. Unable to assume the mantle of wife, Aphasia was free to participate in Athenian in public life, where she modeled the behavior of a male intellectual. Socrates and his student Plato were both fans, Socrates even joked that Pericles' famous funeral oration was penned by Aspasia. So that's a little bit about who inspired this drink. Uh, it was um, created by Jen Tosato uh, from the Mission Taco Joint in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, let's see. Jen's soul of wit was inspired by Turkish delight candies, a nod to Aspasia's birthplace. Through the nutty notes of sherry, honey, and cherries, she has created a simple, elegant, blah, 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 blah. All right, so uh, you can see up on the uh, the recipe there, uh, actually, I've already got the recipe here, that um, there's a lot of drink uh, uh, to be made from this recipe. Oh, and uh, let's see. Uh, oh, wow. Got a lot of people subscribing. Thank you, everyone. Uh, is it another gift from our anonymous benefactor? It is. Thank you, anonymous benefactor. I appreciate you doing that. Um, so Ogre says we are also interested in the popcorn coming up. Uh, and hi, Mickey. Mickey is there, too. Uh, Pulljack says uh, Cuddle Bunchkins says hi. Hi, Cuddle Bunchkins. Uh, and uh, Chris should be along coming, too, says Ogre. Oh, and this, so this is not actually, um, well, it's sort of a punch. It's, it's a, it's a hot drink for one thing, um, which we will see in a minute. 
Um, I'm going to scale it back because I do not need a full bottle's worth of this tonight. <laughs> Tempting, but I'm not going to do that. So, um, I but I put up the whole thing because I thought that um, for a Thanksgiving drink, this is my favorite kind of drink for a party or a gathering where you can just make a big batch of it and let people serve themselves. Um, if you have a... Um, like a fondue pot or a chafing dish or anything like that, they work fantastic for this. Just make a big batch, put a ladle in, put it, the temperature on low, and it'll be a nice hot drink for your guests. And you don't have to spend the entire night making drinks. So, <laughs> Ogre Marco says, a hot punch sounds dirty. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, and some, and our anonymous benefactor strikes again with giving Poljack a tier one sub. Thank you again. I appreciate that. All right. So yes, this is kind of like a mulled wine, except it's a mulled sherry, um, which is something I hadn't seen before. And I gave it a try and it's, I like it. So let me get to actually to the making. Uh, I'm going to make a quarter batch of this. So um, I'm going to start. And I normally say to start with the cheapest ingredients first. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start with the sherry because I'm going to measure it out that way. Um, if you don't have your own graduated cylinder, I find them super handy because I'm an old science nerd. But, uh, you know, uh, one quarter of a 750 ml bottle is 187 milliliters. Uh, there's... Uh, I meant to do the conversion of that at some point, but I never got to it. You can put it, type it into Google. Okay, what is 187 milliliters in ounces or whatever, in cups or whatever you want to use. There we go, that's 100 mils. Because I don't have a, I have a 100 and a 500, actually and a 100 and a 1,000. I don't have a 250 mil. Uh, graduate cylinder anymore. Well, not anymore. Not since I left the last. Um, there we go. Uh, hand note, by the way, uh, when you're storing your sherry, always store it in the fridge. Otherwise, it will go bad fast. Uh, if you store it in the fridge, it will last ages. Uh, and I, by the way, I'm using an Amontillado sherry. This is just cheap sherry I got from... I think it was Trader Joe's. It might have just been the grocery store. Um, but it's a nice dry sherry. Um, I use it for several reasons, not least of which is because the cask of Amontillado is a running joke with some of our friends. Um, so, all right. And now we need a quarter cup of honey, or in this case, one tablespoon, because I'm doing a quarter batch. Uh, thank you, Winter Vespers. Um, uh, who says that it's six, roughly 6.6 .6 or six and a half ounces. Um, Morning Wind says, I've never heard that about Sherry. Yeah, I I hadn't heard it for uh, you know, until, I want to say about a year or two ago. Um, and I was just trying to use my Sherry as quickly as possible. But yeah, it keeps it fresh for ages. I, I, I have a, like two or three different bottles of things. I have a... I keep the bottle of Amontillado in there. I keep a bottle of, um, uh, was it? Well, I keep a bottle of Madeira and I keep a bottle of cream sherry in there. Um, cause I'm a big cream sherry fan. So, uh, for the honey, I'm using a Pacific Northwest wildflower honey with, from Trader Joe's, which I really like. All right. There's my honey. And because it's, just for me, I'm just going to use my finger here. All right. And here, I should probably get this a little closer to the camera so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Um, all right. I will admit, um, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll admit it later on. So, 12 and a half heavy, heavy tablespoons of sherry, if you want to measure all that out. I think that's uh, three quarters of a cup and a, a little bit. Um, all right. 
So that's uh, Sherry and the Honey. Oh, the orange peel. It is next. So when I made this last time, I did forgot to add the orange peel. So I'm going to see how that how that changes things. Um, but basically, you want to use a full or full peel from an orange uh, if you're doing the full batch. I mean, try and figure out roughly a quarter. Well, And I'm just using an orange or a, a vegetable peeler for this. There are folks who say you should not use that when getting the zest for your cocktails because it uh, gets too much of the pith. I've never really had too much of a problem with that. All right, I'm gonna call that Probably a little bit more than a quarter, but it's good enough. All right, uh, one cup of dried cherries. Uh, here they are. Um, again, just got some from Trader Joe's. Uh, Ogre Marco says, I used to keep very dry sherry around for Chinese cooking, but uh, Liao Zhao is way cheaper. Uh, yeah, I think, let's see, what do I use for it? Um, I use Shao Sing which is this for my uh, Chinese cooking. Uh, my pronunciation of English words is bad, so... Asian. Um, Ogre says, those people are zester salesmen. Uh, you know, no, they're cocktail nerds, which is nearly as bad. Um, and, you know, I'm sure they're probably right. You can probably weed out a little bit of bitterness uh, with that. But eh, it's not not that big of a deal, in my opinion. All right, so quarter of a cup of dried cherries in here. And shake that around a little bit. Uh, one cinnamon stick. I'm going to add a quarter of a cinnamon stick, and you're just going to have to trust me on this. Um, so, and then half teaspoon of whole cloves. For a quarter of this, it's like two or three. I'm going to put in three because I like cloves. I'm, I'm well established as liking cloves. One, two, three. We'll say that orange peel does take up a lot of space in, in the pan. Um, and then one teaspoon allspice, so a quarter of a teaspoon of allspice. And because allspice are you know pretty tall, I'm again just going to add like two or three. And one, two, three. And one star anise. So I use, normally use uh, star anise for uh, vanilla star cocktails. So I've already weeded out all of the little bits. So I only have really good ones in there. But I'm just gonna like break off to, actually here's a good one that I've already started breaking off. Okay, there's, there we go. Yeah. I'm just going to break off a couple of little pieces on it and put those in there because star anise is very powerful and I do not want it taking over. Um, so that's roughly a quarter of a star anise. And then a an eighth of a teaspoon of coriander for me, a, a half if you're doing the full batch. So again, it's just like two or three here. And they go bouncing off into the sunset. I'm sure Kat will find that later. All right. Um, and then, here, let me go do this. And we'll put this over here. And I'm just going to put it on low heat. Well, first I'm going to stir it up a little bit. And yes, the new camera setup returns. That was one of the things I was rushing to get working before folks showed up. And uh, I didn't see this orange peel is really taking up a lot of space. I'm going to um, let that Simmer for a little bit. You're supposed to let it simmer now for 
half an hour to 40 minutes. I think half an hour is more than sufficient uh, for this small of a batch. If you're doing a full batch, set it up an hour before you're, well, not an hour, maybe a half hour before you're expecting people to arrive. Or you can set it up ahead of time, cover it, and then, you know, half hour before you're expecting people to show up, go ahead and just turn on the, uh, turn on the heat. So, but I'm going to go ahead and do, set my timer for 30 minutes. And I actually did remember to set it. Um, oh, and Ogre Marco says, uh, Xu Xing and Liao Zhao are the same thing, just regional names or something. So, good to know. All right. So, we're going to let that simmer for half an hour. And in the meantime, move on to our Parmesan Ranch popcorn. Um, and for this one, I'm actually going to, uh, you notice I put a third of a cup of popcorn kernels on there. Um, that's a little bit of an affectation. You can just, however you want to get your popcorn. Uh, this is the recipe to make about one point or one and, a, and three quarters quarts of popcorn's worth. Uh, a heavy third of a cup is roughly... Uh, we'll roughly make that amount. So, but I figured while I was doing this, I'd show you how to make popcorn from scratch if you didn't know already. I'm sure folks here do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, so this is my wok here. Um, and you can see I just got my lid covered with some heavy aluminum foil. Um, and just, it took two, two, Strips of it, so I just folded those together in the top, lined it there, and I'm going to. I'm going to pour in some peanut oil. You can use canola oil or anything that's a nice high temperature oil. Um, you don't want to use olive oil because it will just start smoking. Uh, before you get anything done. Um, and yes, it's a nice, well-seasoned walk here. Oh, here it is. Um, <laughs> but you will notice, if you're a careful observer, that this is a round bottom walk, and I have a flat countertop. So it doesn't work as ideally as I would like but it does work more or less. And this is the pan I learned to start making popcorn in. So eh, what are you gonna do? All right, so what I'm gonna do after I put the oil in, so I'm gonna put two popcorn kernels in there. And when those pop, I will know that it is time to put the rest of the kernels in. I'll take those out, but it, it will mean that the uh, pan is now hot enough for popcorn. So I'm going to put that on medium heat and put the lid on so that when they pop, they don't go and nail someone in the eye. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to move things around a little bit, put the spices away and get things out for the rest of the popcorn. So how's everyone else's week been going? Hopefully better than ours has. Um, things are, uh, like I say, things have been kind of overwhelming. I'm not going to get into it too much just because um, you know, privacy concerns and all that. But uh, like I say, it's been a little on the rough side and very, very time consuming at the very least. So... Um, Let's see, I am going to take a minute because now that this is starting to heat up a little bit, I'm going to stir the um, stir the sherry a little bit. And no, that is not a euphemism. I just want to get that honey nicely distributed. And something's Making a high pitch wine is my walk getting ready, I think. Hmm. Not 
not sure what that's coming from. Well, I don't know if you're even hearing the high-pitched whine. Um, all right, so um, while that's getting started, oh, Chad says you can hear the uh, high-pitched whine. All right, well, I don't know, it's strange. I've never had that happen before. Hopefully whatever it is will quit at some point when something boils off or I'm not seeing really where it is. Uh, the, uh, oh, sorry. The every oven camera is quite large. Uh, sorry. I was, uh, futzing around trying to get that, uh, trying to get the wine to stop. the weirdest darn thing. I'm not really sure. All right, well, if we can sub we'll try and suffer through this and and uh, make this I think that once the popcorn actually starts popping in there, it might fix it. Um Chad Bear says is it something recently turned on or maybe outside? No, it's definitely inside. It's definitely coming from the oven area. Um I tried turning off both the burners, but uh, and I tried moving everything, but it doesn't seem to uh, really be something I can quite nail down. Yeah, and Ogre says that steam, it might be my kernel, although now they both popped, so. Because that was my guess too, but it was a little too loud for it just to be a kernel. And so, yes, I pulled out my two pop kernels and and I just dump in that third of a cup. And I was hoping that would make things um, quieter. I don't see where anything's trapping steam. Okay, taking it off there. Doesn't seem to be coming from that. Let's move around the. <laughs> Wherever I go, it seems to be coming from somewhere else. All right. Um, so oh, I do need something out of here, though, and that is. Here. That's driving me nuts. I apologize that it's doing the same to you. All right, but since we're doing time sensitive type stuff now, I am going to. Uh, so, one thing you can't really see I'm doing because I switched the cameras is I'm every so often I'm shaking around the walk just like those old Jiffy Pops. It does sound like the walk. I don't know where it's got steam trapped in there, though. Maybe, eh. Anyway, <laughs> pull jackass, if uh, this is the beginning of a creepypasta, the first mysterious wine, then the alien robot abduction. That could well be. And Ogre, no, it is not my sink. Um, so I'm going to quickly grate two tablespoons of Parmesan. Uh, I find that uh, having cold Parmesan uh, and good Parmesan will get more of a powdery Parmesan, which you really want for this. 
And then, um, cause if you get the strips, they won't really stick well to the, um, to the popcorn. If they're too big and they, you can melt them on, but that's about it. And you'll get a big clot of stuff at the bottom. All right. So that is one and yeah. All right, that's a pretty chintzy one. Let's do a little bit more here. All right. You know what? We call that good. A little extra Parmesan is not going to kill things here. All right. So that's uh, two tablespoons Parmesan. We need half a teaspoon of ranch dressing mix. And I'm just using some, what is this, uh, Hidden Valley Ranch. This is their buttermilk recipe because it's what I found at the grocery store. Um, and so quarter teaspoon. And you'll notice this is already open. That's because I used it last time when I was doing the sample. And it sounds like the popcorn is pretty much done there. All right, and so what I'm gonna do, I've got my popcorn bowl here. I'll try and mix it all up in that. I am going to take it off the heat quickly because it's gonna burn otherwise, and I may have already burned it. And then I'm going to flip it over and so it's in that lid that's lined with foil. And then I am going to use this, uh, I think it's called a, was it a basket or a, I don't know, it's got a name, which I always forget because I'm the only one who cares. And so I just don't allocate brain space to it. And I'm going to slowly scoop that into my popcorn bowl. And if I see any that have got a little burnt, I'm going to take them out and I'll try and avoid getting any of the unpopped kernels in there. And at this point, you could just add butter to this and it would be fantastic. Uh, try and avoid the kernels there. And pop ones, rather. All right, there we go. But the key is to shake it around, shake the popcorn around, and then uh, get the kernels off the heat as soon as they're done popping. Because, like I say, otherwise, it's uh, it gets way too hot. All right, sorry, it gets burnt. Uh, I I was saying way too hot because I was looking at that sherry and it has started boiling. Fortunately, I've got the lid on it, so I'm just gonna turn that off. All right, so I've got my popcorn. I need to finish up this. I need an eighth of a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm just gonna eyeball that. Uh, there we go, just a shake in there. Um, I'm gonna use, add, um, uh, I did not, uh, like I say, things are, things are off right now. There should be, one teaspoon dried parsley flakes on there. Please add that to the uh, thing. A steel spider, that was it. Thank you, Ogre. I was looking for that word. All right. I just bought this when I was at the store earlier getting lemons, so. Because normally when something calls for parsley, I just use parsley out of the yard. But you probably want dried parsley for this. And, uh, uh, of course, it's not opening. In a perfect world, you'd be more uh, prepared than I would was and have this uh, all prepared ahead of time. Okay, so that was one teaspoon of this. If it, will, hey, it even fits in there. So, adding one teaspoon there. And then, finally, uh, the melted butter. So I'm gonna just quickly, using one of the measuring spoons, stir that around. Apologize for not having the uh, the the uh, uh, parsley on there. 
I don't know why I just missed it. I'm uh, gonna have two and a half tablespoons of melted butter. Uh, well, right now they're not melted, but I'm gonna stick this in here. It'll take about 30 seconds, and then it should be just about right. I should probably have cut that up a bit to give it more surface area to melt from, but it'll be okay. All right, so adding the uh, butter on here, and then I'm going to add the rest. I'm trying to do this a little bit quickly so that the butter doesn't solidify on there. Um, then I'm going to kind of shake this around a bit, make sure you get a Spoon here. Um, nice big spoon. Nice big spoon. You know, I'll do whatever that was later. All right, here we go. Nice big spoon. Just to stir it around. And I have to say, it's already smelling pretty fantastic. And I'm trying to be as careful as I can because I don't want to crush the kernels. One full size kernels in here. All right, so that's it. That's all you have to do to make that popcorn. Um, uh, Chad Bear says bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Yeah, there is a little bit of that going on here. It would have been also good for Halloween. Um, and you know what, since we're gonna try, uh, the idea is to have these things go together. I am going to grab a, um, a mug here, just a little glass mug, and hopefully, let's see, it's been going for about 15 minutes, but it's also been boiling, which is more than I wanted. So let me show you what the um, the drink looks like here. Oh, it did, it froze up, the camera froze up, Never mind. Um, that's how things are going tonight. All right, I'm, Quite frankly, that camera setup was ambitious to begin with. All right, so let me see if I can tilt it so you can sort of see what it's looking like in there Ooh, without spilling everything. Um, this way. You can see the uh, cherries have rehydrated and um, that the, the sherry has taken on a bit of a, a red hue from all that. Um, now, I will say I just let this go for 15 minutes because it's a small batch. Um, I'm not that worried about it. Um, the longer you let this steep, the more of the flavors you're going to get from the spices and the orange peel and all of that. I'm trying to keep the spices from pouring in here. Obviously, if you're doing this in a big container for everyone to serve themselves. You'll want a big ladle for it. All right. And I know you can't see what I'm doing. I apologize. I'm just pouring it out. I'm trying to keep everything from going with it because you don't want to get like a mouthful of clove or something. So, all right, here, let me move this back for a second. You can see the uh, the glass here. It's mostly full. What I'm going to do is I actually pick out some that just cherries, make sure there's no spices hidden in there. Just because I can tell you from experience, these now rehydrated cherry soaked cherries are delightful. Um, and obviously, this glass is a little bit on the big side for what we're doing here. So just go ahead and, you know, you use a smaller glass. Um, a punch cup would be great if you have, you know, small teacups from your, I mean, from whatever, whatever you want to use that's smaller than this, it would be perfect. Because this is, in theory, a quarter of the entire batch. Um, if you're going to have a lot of people you know are going to drink this, I'd make a double batch, quite frankly, because I imagine that this would preserve very well in the fridge. Um, you know, only having one glass, I'm not going to keep it that long. Now, this is 
super hot right now, but I'll see if I can take a sip, let you know how it is. Mm. So you do get those cherries just right off the bat. And like I say, this is very hot. So, you know, I didn't take a huge sip. You get that caramely nuttiness of the sherry with the spices just kind of uh, as an accent note to the whole thing. Um, and again, I only let it go for 15 minutes. If I had let this simmer for another half hour, it would be even better. Um, and yes, cheers. Cheers, everyone. <sighs> Here's to more relaxing times in our future, all of our futures. Mm. That uh, that cherry note is almost citrusy. There's no citrus in here except, well, I guess the, the orange peel is in there. And so you do get some of those citrus notes off of that. Normally when you get the oil from the peel, it's a little, I want to say drier. Um, but here it's rehydrated with that honey and it just, it's sweet without being cloying. It is um, spiced and caramelly and all sorts of good in here. And I can tell you, here, let me just, yeah. Oh. Sorry, I got a clue. The rehydrated cherries are very good. Okay, uh, Ogre says, I'm not terribly sure you would even need to refrigerate after straining. You know, I, I you probably could keep it maybe even overnight or something. Um, but I would definitely stick it in the fridge and then, uh, you know, microwave it to warm it up again later. Or, you know, stick it back in a pan. All right, this popcorn. Let me tell you about the popcorn. Let me grab a handful of it. There is a lot of flavor here. Um, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that I normally like a lot of salt on my popcorn, and this does not need it. Um, it is a little... I don't want to say it's too salty, but it's certainly not lacking in salt. If you don't like salt on your popcorn, try and find a low-salt ranch mix or something like that. Um, like Again, I'm not saying it's over-salted. Oh, also, I use salted butter. You can use unsalted butter to bring the salt levels down. I think this is perfect. Um, certainly doesn't need more salt. Um, but you are getting, you're definitely getting the ranch in here. You're getting the butter. Uh, you're getting the Parmesan. Parsley flakes, I think mostly are for color, in my opinion. Parsley's never really been a huge flavor packing punch, uh, no matter what we put in. The... Um, the onion, I think, is is also good, but again, it's a little lost. Uh, you're really getting ranch and Parmesan in this, which is what it says on the label. So, mm. And the butter is showing up more than just um, keeping, keeping the uh, mix on the popcorn. Although it very much is. I uh, didn't actually show you. That's what it's looking like right now. Uh, you can see the flecks of green and such in there. So this is a delightful uh, mix just for, you know, like I say, just for sitting in front of the TV, watching, you know, movies, sports, watching the Seahawks barely scrape out another win and breaking my heart every other week. Um, and yes, I am a football fan in spite of being a giant nerd, maybe because of it. Uh, my dad and I used to watch football when I was uh, when I was a kid. I still can't remember any of the rules to save my life, but I just enjoy watching it. Um, we've cut the cord on on just about everything, and so lately I've been having to uh, listen over the radio. We used to be able to get one of the stations over the air with the antenna, but they stopped broadcasting. Hmm. Anyway, lovely stuff. Highly recommended. And as you can see, even in my frenzied state, I was still able to make it fairly easily. Ingredients are not expensive. 
Um, especially if you already have the onion powder and, uh, and um, parsley sitting around, then it's really, it was like two bucks for one of those uh, containers of ranch dressing mix. And, you know, um, and that makes two batches of this. The, um, you know, butter, you have, you everyone has butter on hand. <laughs> Parmesan, I used good Parmesan just because it was easier to, um, I, I think it made a finer powdery Parmesan once I grated it. Um, when I used the cheap Parmesan on the first batch, it made those long strips of Parmesan, which did not stick to the, the popcorn very well. Um, again, also keeping the uh, Parmesan refrigerated seems to help with that. So, let's see. Um, Chad Bear says, I've always thought that parsley was a palate cleanser, a taste eraser, if you please. It kind of is. Um, I, at least they used to serve it as that. It does have a flavor as it, all its own, but it also does, I don't know, it, it's, it's not a, I don't know how to describe it. It's not really a flavor that you're used to having by itself. Uh, so it doesn't really stick out that much. At least that's my impression. Um, other people might have better answers. Probably Ogre knows more about that. But um, Ogre does say that Parmesan is pretty salty as well. And I will agree with that. Um, especially uh, the better quality Parmesans tend to have a little more salty flavor to them. But um, yeah. And I have to say this, uh, the sherry is, mm, it is delightful. This book, um, you'll be, you'll be hearing more from this book as we go along. Uh, because there, I know at least two more, um, I've already checked off as being good. I almost did one of them today because, uh, but then I realized I wouldn't have another show before Thanksgiving. And I think this is, this is the style of drink again, that I like to serve at parties where I can just put it out there, let people serve themselves. It's not very high alcohol content. Um, the sherry is, you know, not real high. What did, I put it away, but let me check. I don't think sherry is very high alcohol to begin with. Um, oh, it's way in the back now. All right. It is uh, 17.5%, which is not insignificant. But remember, we diluted it down with honey and uh, not that much other stuff. Um, but so it's been diluted down a little bit with the honey. And then it's been boiled, so a little bit of alcohol is going to come off. And then, um, you know, you're serving it in small quantities. So it's not the kind of thing. And it's I think it's flavorful enough that people are not going to be gulping this down, especially when it's hot. But, you know, even when it's cold, you're not going to be taking big gulps of this stuff. So it's, it's nice to keep people from getting too far gone, <laughs> uh, which is not, you know, something... I've had to worry about, but I know other people do have to worry about it. So it's it's a nice sipping drink. I think it would be fantastic on a cold winter's day. Something about it says fall to me. It's those caramel flavors rather than like a uh, a mulled wine or something like that. That those bright uh, you know red wine notes to it. Um, something about this is just that caramely says says autumn to me. Um, Let's see. Chad Bear says, challenge accepted. Well, you know, each their own. Um, I've actually, like, I, I think I've mentioned it a few times on the show that I've really had to slow down my drinking a bit uh, since I've transitioned because it's the bodies that run on estrogen um, process alcohol. What was it? They, they, um, they absorb alcohol at the normal rate, but or at the same rate everyone else does but they process it through the liver and get rid of it more slowly. So it builds up faster and you get drunker faster and then stay drunker longer. So it's really, it, it's affected the way I drink and the way I choose drinks quite a bit. Um, it's rare that I have a Manhattan anymore and I used to have those all the time. Um, I don't think it's affected my taste very much, but it does affect my, uh, my, you know, how many drinks I can have in a night. So. Mm. Ogre says, parsley is lovely, green and herbaceous, 
I put it in lots of things, salad, sauces, Greek, and Middle Eastern food. Uh, tabbouleh is marvelous. Yes, absolutely. And that's actually, I actually have a ton of parsley planted out there, um, now that you mention it, for, um, oh, what's the, the Greek dish? Uh, I'm supposed to take the cherry off now. Um, Slovaki. I have it for Slovaki and uh, a couple other things that are Middle Eastern based now that you mention it. So, um, yeah, those are uh, excellent. Yes, <laughs> that is what you use parsley for in addition to everything else. But I do also remember back in the 70s and somewhat into the 80s that every dish you got in a restaurant had this little bundle of, of parsley on the dish that you're supposed to use to... You know, and most people didn't even touch it. It just sat there and made something green on your plate. Um, but, you know, I think the idea was, as Chad said, uh, Chad Bear said, to uh, cleanse your palate between meals or between courses. So um, anyway, uh, so those are the first two things. Uh, I'm going to try not to yammer on as much as I normally do tonight. Uh, let's talk about the last thing which is the Stonewall Cocktail. And uh, let me tidy up a little bit here. Should have been doing that while we were talking. Um, and I'm just gonna leave this over here because I would very much like to have more of those cherries. Um, and this is empty now. I will... Uh, so... Um, and Lori is unfortunately not with us tonight. Uh, she is not feeling well, but um, she will be back again. She uh, sends her well wishes to everyone, but just was, was not up to it today. All right. Here, I'm just gonna set this off to the side for the moment. And yes, I grab pliers to open something because I'm a tool using human. All right. Let's see. All right. Last thing here. Okay. Yes. Chad Bear says garnish. Yes, parsley is the garnish uh, for it. Yes. Um, oh, speaking of which, for the sherry, as I said, I dumped a bunch of the, the sherry soaked cherries in there. You could also put in like a slice of lemon peel um, if you're serving this, you know, to, to folks as opposed to letting them serve themselves. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I think the, the uh, slice of lemon or uh, or even orange or whatever you want to use for it. it. It makes it look a little nicer. I don't think it's really necessary. Um, I think it would be a little bit more, I think it might actually over time kind of overwhelm the drink. So, uh, Winter Vespers and Morning Wind say, uh, please let Lori, uh, send Lori our get well wishes and uh, please let Lori <laughs> send more, ah. Please send Lori warm good wishes that she feels better soon. I definitely will. Uh, she's actually asleep right now. Otherwise, I, I would uh, go do it right now. But uh, yeah, she's she is unconscious at the moment. So, all right. I set this off to the side. And as it cools, by the way, it is still just as warm and bright and it's like a hug. Mm. Honestly, this is the my favorite drink that I've discovered for a while. The uh, Caprahina was very good as well. There have been a couple other. Oh, the Jack Rose was also very good. I think this is, I mean, it's definitely top three this season. Maybe, maybe top five of the entire show. So, high recommend for this one. All right, last drink is a Stonewall cocktail. As I said, next uh, Monday is Trans Day of Remembrance, and I was trying to find a cocktail. The one that I planned fell through, and you know I just couldn't couldn't get the ingredients to even try it. So 
I did what I usually do uh, for any trans holiday and went out looking to see what was out there. Well, of course, all the queer and trans cocktails are party drinks for pride. They are, you know, brightly colored and, you know, meant to get you as drunk as possible, as fast as possible, and they're slushies for summer and this, that, and the other thing. And just basically useless for a somber <laughs> reflection on those who have passed in, in the past year and basically mourning our dead, which is, for those who are unfamiliar, what Trans Day of Remembrance is. It's the day where trans folks mourn those who have passed from us and, um, and just honor their legacy and memory. So, well, the, the drink for one famous trans person fell apart. So I started looking for some others. Uh, I searched for Marsha P. Johnson, who is uh, famously known to have thrown the first brick at the Stonewall Riot. Uh, and um, oh, Sylvia Rivera, uh, another trans woman who was said to throw the second Molotov cocktail at the riots that came after. Um, I looked for the, uh, the, there was one of the bartenders for the Stonewall Inn, um, had some, you know, a fairly basic drink, but was one of his famous, you know, his favorites, you know, cause I figured the riots were a very important thing in our history. Um, and there were a few drinks for Marsha P. Johnson, although, yeah, they were didn't look that great and then and didn't really seem to be that tailored to her. Eventually I found one named for the inn. And I'm gonna describe it first and then sort of go through my thought process around it a little bit. Um, it was in fact named for the Stonewall Inn. Uh, there's another cocktail called the Stone Wall, two words, and it's by Dale DeGroff who's a famous bartender, and um, it has nothing to do with the Stonewall Inn. This one is, uh, was invented by Nick, uh, was it? Nick Polotakana, eh, Polo, P-O-L-O-T-N-I-A-N-K-O. Uh, so I'm going to let you all pronounce the, the Polish there. Um, I had it down earlier, but today is gone for me. But he invented it on October 15th of this year. Uh, so it's not a classic drink in any stretch of the word. It's also not the only drink named for the Stonewall Inn uh, and the Stonewall Riots and all of that. There are, I found at least two others, um, but I saw this one first and it was the most interesting to me. Um... There were, well, I shouldn't say the most interesting, the most attractive to me because it had a lot of stuff, stuff in it that I like. Um, and uh, the quote that went along with it was, it's a cocktail that's as strong and resilient as the community it represents, which, good line, good line. Um, and uh, so I went to look at it. Oh, I, I don't even have the recipe up yet. Um it's made with bourbon, which uh, this is just kind of for me. But I, when I was looking for stuff, uh, you know, basically I was looking for uh, trans themed drinks, and you know, because I'm trans fam, I looked for estrogen themed drinks. And what I found was a uh, National Institute of Health um, paper on whether or not red wine and bourbon and I think one other thing uh, actually uh, produce or cause your body to have more estrogen in it. And there, the research was done on mice and they found some evidence that it had the, there were phytoestrogens in there that had a positive estrogen like effect on the body. So sorry, boys, the, uh, the, Bourbon is for us girls. Um, and so this has bourbon in it, so that caught me fa my fancy. And, but the thing is, 
if you look at the ingredients, it's kind of a take on a whiskey sour, which is, it's kind of a whiskey sour with extra steps, to be honest. Um, and so, but I was thinking about it, it's like, you know, so it's not, nothing really that special. It's nothing really fancy. It's nice. It's not also, you know, a big party type drink. It's so it's somber or it could be somber, could be, you know, joyous, but it's, you know, it, it fits the, the build. But honestly, when you think about it, you know, trans kind of means with extra steps. I'm a trans woman. I've been a woman all my life. I just, there were some extra steps involved for me, uh, you know, for a trans man. They've been a man their entire lives. There were just a couple extra steps. So on that level, it really piqued my, my fancy. And, you know, that's not part of the drink. That's just something I'm putting on it, but I, I'm hoping you can uh, can ride along with me and and see this is you know there there is no Trans Day of Remembrance cocktail. There is there are no trans cocktails. There are no you know except for something that someone capital you know, made, made, did a capitalism on to get some queer bucks out of us. Um, so anything that we're, we're drinking today is going to be something that we put meaning in. And that's, you know, we've got, we've got a few holidays out there and they're holidays that we put meaning in, not other folks. They're the, they're the days that are important for us and we put the meaning in them. So, um, you know, so take it for what it's worth. This is what I, what I chose to do today. Um, see if you like it, see if you agree. Also, I apologize there. I did not do a uh, non-alcoholic drink today. I've been trying to include more, um, but I I really wanted to do that first one because I, enjoy, I enjoyed it so much when I tried it out. And I, I was looking for something for today and um, didn't even come close to finding anything non-alcoholic. So my apologies to non-drinkers out there. Um, anyway, so let's, let's get to it and actually make this thing that I've been talking about. Um, start off with an ounce of lemon juice. Oh. And... Um, and by the way, I think us putting meaning into things is a very trans way to go about, about it. Um, I'm not sure if I told this story on the channel before about, um, why you're never supposed to iron the trans flag. And um, so a lot of people put it up in their in their bedrooms or in their office or wherever. And when you get it from wherever you bought it, it comes all wrinkled from where it's been folded. And someone, a kid who was trans, just was coming out and they put their um, they put their flag up on the, on the wall of their bedroom and some trans folk found their post on Twitter and said, um, you know, you know, how trans are you really? You can't really be trans because you, look, you didn't care about your flag. You didn't even iron it. And instantly... A trans, another trans person piped up and said, well, that shows what you know. You don't iron the trans flag when you put it up on your wall because those creases are a memorial to uh, those who didn't make it. The, the, the trials and the struggles that trans people go through, we don't have time to iron is the thought because we're too busy trying to survive. It is not neglect. It is symbolic. 
And every other trans person who came across, across that post said, yes, that is true. That is why we don't iron our flags to... And at first my thought was, that is brilliant. By the way, I'm now adding an ounce of maple syrup to this. Uh, that is just brilliant, you know, practical joke, taking the, the knees out from under a transphobe. And then um, a friend of mine, Jen Giggles, who you may know from uh, All on the Table, uh, said, yeah, but it's more than that. You know, we made up the story and we all instantly agreed to it, but we did it to protect a kid who had just discovered they were trans and had been attacked. And we all rallied to their defense as a group. No one, no one disputed it. We were just all there for that kid. And I'm tearing up just talking about it. And that was, I had not, not thought about it that way, but it is absolutely true. A lot of our traditions are because we lost so many people and there were so many people who couldn't come out for so long, uh, two ounces of bourbon, by the way, uh, that those who can now, we protect them because we were, we were in their shoes once too. So, and next Monday is the day where we memorialize all those people that the wrinkles are for, the, uh, the ones who didn't make it as far as we did who didn't have folks to protect them. And so, so that's what we're, that's what we're making this for. Uh, and just two, actually I'm gonna put three dashes of Angostura in there. And before I shake that up, I'm gonna get the glass ready. And I'll check the uh, chat here. Um, Liz Sunrise, uh, first time chat, says hi, welcome. <laughs> Sorry, came in on kind of a bummer of a story there, but uh, happy to have you here. So glad you could make it. Um, we're, I, I don't know if, if you've seen what we're doing here, but this is a Stonewall cocktail we're making for Trans Day of Visibility, which is up on Monday. Um, but it's good to have you here. Thank you for being here. Um, Chad Bear says, it's like when you see someone being harassed, you go, hey, we've been waiting for you and bring them into your group like you already knew them. It's uh, the best kinds of covers, standing up for others. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything you can do to protect someone who's being bullied or harassed uh, is is a good thing. It's it's You're doing God's work then. Um, and if you can humiliate the bullies at the same time, you know... <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I am going to, aha, the, I just realized the whistling stopped a while ago. All right, I've got some of these nice, let me move back a bit so you can see what I'm doing. I've got these nice big ice cubes in here. I tried one the other night. This is the best looking one. We've been in there for a while, so I'm going to brush off a little bit of the frost. Just put it, ooh, very. It just barely fits in there. It, if I had an ice knife, I would carve it down, but I don't. So I'm just going to let it slowly dissolve while it sits just barely in that glass. <sighs> All right. I'm going to add some ice to this. This regular ice. And normally I would uh, just add it to the glass and stir it. Um, it kind of feels like a stir drink, but with that maple syrup in there, I really want to shake it and incorporate that well. Um, and also it's got lemon juice in there, so you really have to, um, you really want to shake it. So here we go. Uh, Chad Bear says those are ice blocks. They absolutely are. Uh, I got that ice mold. Um, I think for my birthday this year, and because 
everyone here knows I'm a uh, Greg from How to Drink Fangirl, and he always uses those big blocks of ice. And I'm sure he gets the special, um, highly clarified ones and all that. Um, but I figured, you know, I did have one big spherical ice thing that was, all right, I say spherical, it was in the shape of the Death Star, because I am a giant nerd like every other trans person I've ever met. Um, and, oh, I should have measured my glass before doing this. All right. Uh, oh, and you want to garnish this with a um, bit of lemon peel. And I'm just going to use the already squeezed lemon here. All right. And I'm going to express it on there. I'm just going to put it in the side. And here we go. To everyone we've lost and everyone who's still with us. Cheers, everyone. And it is a lovely drink. Um, I say, I think the maple syrup is actually coming through a little bit better than it did last time I made this. Um, and it does add a nice little dimension to it. Uh, I'm not sure how much different, I mean, the, the person who invented it, uh, Nick, said that you could use agave nectar or anything, uh, um, or uh, simple syrup even, and then it would really be basically a uh, bourbon sour or whiskey sour without the egg white and with the bitters, but um, I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a nice drink. It is, you know, it is familiar and, you know, just there, there's another bit I was going to talk about where, you know, it's, it, it's just like, you know, a normal cocktail, just like trans folks or just like normal people. We're just people. Um, you know, there's, you can, you can describe lots of things, lots of ways. It's a nice drink. It is a, it's a appropriate drink, I think, for the day. It is, um, and really, the, the important thing is not what you're drinking. It's who you're remembering and um, the people you're drinking for. So I think this one works. There are others that work just as well. Cheers, everyone. Ah. Mm. Uh. Yeah, Chad Bear says, uh, there are, there are better ice than, oh, the, the large cubes are better than the smaller ice. Oh yes, because they, they don't melt as fast. Um, the only reason I use the, the large ice in here is because that's what they show in the picture where I got the, uh, the recipe. Um, I actually don't use those very often because they're really good for like old fashions and that sort of thing, which is how you can tell I didn't know it was, <laughs> the drink wouldn't fit in the glass. Um, cause I haven't made an old fashioned since I got these glasses. Um, let's see, uh, but big ice always cracks me up. The big old thunk in the glass. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's always very cool to see the big chunk in there. It, it makes it feel a little fancier. Um, and yes. So that's what I've got for you tonight. Um, I'm I'm a little wiped out, so I, unless uh, folks uh, start redeeming the points so that um, I do uh, tell a story or uh, make another drink or something like that, which uh, I don't know if folks remember, you've got those little drink tickets that should be down in the corner of your screen. You can redeem them for all sorts of things. Uh, make me dance like a monkey, although I didn't actually add dance like a monkey as a redeem. Um, but yeah, these are, are a couple of good drinks. Um, I'd say, you know, I think I like the, the sherry a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit more of a, I don't know, it's, like I say, it's a warm, comforting hug, which maybe you need on Trans Day of Remembrance. Um, but it depends if you want cold or, or warm. So, uh, all right. So, uh, 
Morning Wind says, yeah, maybe she'll redeem next time. And the Winter Vesper says, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Uh, new, new visitors and old, I appreciate you all. You make this so worthwhile being here. Um, I, I really needed this more than I knew today. So thank you. I really appreciate everyone. So until next time, cheers. Hmm. All right.